boundaries? So that's always a good question. And usually at some point, uh, that's a question that comes up uh, when we're talking about energy, building energy or just energy, personal energy in general. What about boundaries? And, uh, you know, uh, people draining our energy or dealing with difficult situations, difficult people and feeling drained. Um, you've, you've probably heard the, the term energy vampires, which is true. That's definitely not a myth. And so if you have any energy experience, you know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And so these are not figments of the imagination. These are not, you know, um, it's a real thing. Everything is energy. You are a ocean of energy in an ocean of energy, in an ocean of energy, in an ocean of energy. We don't end at the skin. We're immersed in this incredibly complex and vibrant ocean of energy. Not only when you are in a room with someone, let alone a, a whole bunch of people in a room, we won't even talk about a crowded room yet, just in a room with one other person. Your energy is dancing and exchanging in and amongst the two of you. Even on, I've discovered, even on a so-called artificial interface like this, it's the same. It's entanglement. We're all entangled and intermeshed and intermixed, even on, in this circumstance. So the question comes up, how, how and again, if there's more, a more another uh, side question to this, a more specific question, please let me know. How do I um, protect myself from being drained? Um, do I create a boundary? So let's talk about that for a moment. So ultimately, again, right in line with what we've been talking about today, the last couple, this session, last session, the Don Chan, building the energy, securing the energy. So I'm going to jump back and forth a little bit. First of all, ultimately or close to ultimately, you won't need a boundary because you already have a very solid container. You won't need to create a boundary, ultimately, eventually. If I have a strong container, if I am a strong container, if I am in charge of my energy, I'm more conscious of my energy, I become more of a participant, and eventually I become in dominion of myself more and more, and including gathering and holding my energy. I don't need a boundary because I am established. I have a very strong established energy if I have that. And so I don't need to set up any other boundaries. I'm a very strong, solid, uh, complete in itself energy system that's moving through the world. But I'm talking ultimately, ideally, that's a place that where you can get to. Exactly the same thing, exactly the same reason that we're building and working with our energy. Remember I said it's, we have to build a container and then we start to sink and pour the energy in the container and then we want to contain it. We need to do the same thing for ourselves in general. In fact, a little jumping forward, we talk about Don Chan. Ultimately, we become one Don Chan. So we talk about Don Chan, lower abdomen, and there's other Don Chan too. There's a middle Don Chan, there's upper Don Chan. Mainly we work with the lower Don Chan, but ultimately, again, if we jump ahead, you become one Don Chan. Again, that's an energy field or energy um, group. Once you have that, you don't need boundaries because you're clear, you're concise, you're substantial, you're integrated. You're rooted. You're, you're not, your energy can't be stolen. You're not wispy, clear and solid. But up until that point, yes, uh, there are, there's, there's needs to be, there is an, a, an appropriate need to be aware of energy exchange between you and other people, 
other person or simply the environment. And of course, there's very well-known uh, practices to create boundaries or protect yourself. You know, for example, typically creating a ball, you know, white light around you. White light is something people often have used, uh, or just creating, imagining an energy bubble. So you're creating kind of a for uh, you're creating kind of a definition, a line, defined line, a boundary to protect you from someone's dark energy or pulling energy or what have you. That can work. It can work. Uh, it depends on the person who, who's, who's doing this on the strength of their intention, strength of their mind, and their ability to work with energy. So it can vary from it doesn't work at it all, doesn't really work at all, because they the, either the other person's too strong or your ability to work with your energy isn't clear or strong enough yet. So it, could, it can work to a certain degree. So it can be useful. But that's a, I would consider that only a beginning place when you have no other alternatives. Because ultimately, what are you doing when you do that? Even if you become very good at doing that, you have a very strong intention, very strong intentional field, you're able to set up a boundary, you're able to protect yourself and have a stronger will than almost anybody else. And so you can develop that quite strongly. But what, what is that doing? What are you setting up? You are in fight. You are in contention all the time. You are protecting yourself. You're, you're having to hide yourself into a fortress against the rest of the universe. So ultimately, that's not where you want to stay. It's a place, a time, a phase that can be useful. But you can go past that because what you're setting yourself up into is you're in a very dangerous universe all the time. You have to protect yourself from that dangerous universe. And you're always having to set up that. It's always tension. It's always separation. So eventually, as you establish your, your own connection, internal connection, and become settled. In fact, I could even just emphasize that. The better we become at being simply just settled, but see, you can throw out boundaries. Imagine this. It'll make sense. If you can imagine yourself as being just really settled, being that aloof cat, the cat doesn't care what the owners are doing. You, you can be that. The more settled you are, the more relaxed. Remember, I said settled, relaxed, naturally sinks the chi. I just have to throw that in. Just an aside. We're not talking about chi specifically right now, so to speak, in that context. The more settled you can be, the more at ease you can be, the stronger that muscle is. You don't need boundaries because you're settled. But we go a little bit further than that, is you do actually build up a clear, strong essence, presence that doesn't have to put up shields when there is a, you know, um, a negative influence around. Because your internal self-made influence is it. It's clear enough, strong enough, and is it. You have your, you've developed your own influence for yourself. So you don't need boundaries, eventually. You have a strong container of your own holism. If we were to go even further, and Tai Chi and Qi Kong and Taoism, the ultimate principle is emptiness, the void, space, emptiness. That doesn't mean dead emptiness at all. But as you go further and further, you become open and transparent. You're free. You become a, more of a universal being. You're open and free. And so a so-called negative person, negative energy, negative instance, it just moves through you. There's nothing for it to hook onto, hook into. It can't stick on you or in you. It just moves through. You're free. You're open. There's not you. you you're now in a. You don't need to defend yourself against it. You don't need to prepare yourself. You don't need to react. It just moves through you. It's just another energy. 